Hi, welcome to Inside Church. We're so glad that you are able to join us. We trust that as you watch the message that your heart will be stirred and that faith will be built. Thank you so much. Hallelujah to all the distinguished guests. Praise the Lord to all of you who love the Lord who are here tonight. Thank you for coming out on Father's Day. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's just a blessing to be here uh, four years on. And uh, we were here to celebrate a very precious lady this weekend. Amen. None other than your pastor, Pastor Janet Watson. Can we put our hands, your hands together and bless her one more time? Hallelujah. Come on, everybody clap. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. <laughs> wow. Will a merry heart do it good like Madison? Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's good to be here. And uh, we're just going to go with it and see where we end up. Hallelujah. But I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. How many people like to talk to God? How many people believe that it's very, what would you say, good manners to talk to God? <laughs> well, you know, if God is in this place, the Bible says, any man that speaketh unto God, come on, speaketh unto an unknown tongue, speaketh unto God. How many people knows it would be very bad manners with God being here that we did not speak in an unknown tongue? So if you do not speak with tongues, before you leave, we're going to get you baptized in the Holy Spirit, and we're going to get you speaking in tongues, because today, ladies and gentlemen, we need to speak in other tongues. We don't have enough English, or whatever your first language is, to actually interact and work with the mysteries, the unseen, those things that God wants to say, release through us. We don't have enough. Romans 8.26 says that when you don't know how to pray worthily as you ought, the Holy Spirit comes to your aid and bears you up in your weakness with yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Now, I have done a lot of study in this verse over all these years, so I think I know what I'm talking about. I've prayed many, 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 many years. And there's nothing like leaving English to go into tongues. And then there's nothing like leaving tongues to go into yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And the mind, you see, the mind just wants just to buy real estate. It wants to be fruitful and it wants to just say, hey, talk in a language that I understand. But you see, when you talk in tongues to God, you don't talk with your mind. You talk with the Spirit. And you talk out mysteries, things that you did not know. How many people have ever prayed to the Lord to help you in situations and circumstances? Let me see your hands. Well, how many people know that if you knew what to do in that, you wouldn't have to ask God? And I've learned after all these years that the way to hear the wisdom of God is to pray much in other tongues. It's not something you do for five minutes to fill in a service. It's not something you do 30 minutes so that you can just pull the ripcord so that you get your prayer time going, you know, you know, get you up and running. Praying in tongues is one of the greatest blessings that God has ever given us. And I encourage people everywhere, pray beyond yourself. If I knew everything there was to know, then I wouldn't need to pray in a way that I do not understand. But you see, the spirit of understanding comes to me. Jesus himself spoke in Isaiah 11 that the spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel, knowledge, the reverential fear of the Lord. And he said that I will not judge by the eye or by the hearing of the ear. In other words, he said, this is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. You see, there's only three groups of people on the earth. There's not the Hindu, the Muslim, the Greek, the, oh, no, no. There's the heathen, there's the church, and there's the Jew. When any of the other group give their lives to Jesus Christ, they come into the church group. You cease to be a heathen and you cease to be a Jew. You are now part of the church of Jesus Christ. 
And the blessing upon the church was this, that any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You see, when we received the Lord, he moved in the inside of us. And that wasn't just good enough. He wanted to live upon us. Spirit within, spirit upon. The power to live life. Tonight my message may be a little, maybe sober, but I believe it's the Lord. Because no matter what we've been through, God is preparing us for what is to come. And we steady ourselves with joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. I've noticed over the last 30 odd years that I've walked with the Lord that there are many times that I'm loud and it's all go and we're in and out of people's lives and all those different things. And then there's periods of time I go quiet. I kind of like disappear. And there's a reason for that because it's called the drawing on to the Lord. Because when I don't know what to do in the flesh, then I know where I need to go to know the right steps to take, the right words to say, the right paths to walk in. These are serious times. The enemy is fighting tooth and nail. He hasn't played his full hand yet. The days are short. He knows it. He's cruel, vicious. People think he's stupid, but he's not. Three times in the Amplified, it says he's an evil genius. I remember Joshua, our son, coming home from a youth conference one time, and he had a T-shirt on that the youth conference was selling, and it says, Satan is stupid. I took my son to the side, and I said, I never want you to ever wear that T-shirt again. I want to talk to you about who they are saying is stupid. I don't want you ever to think that Satan is stupid, that he's just a lump under your feet. He's an evil genius. He knows things that you do not know. He's been around a whole lot longer than what any of us have ever been. But because of the living spirit within us, we can know things beyond even what he knows. But we must give ourselves to that. You see, we can declare we have the tongue of the learned. But when you pray in the spirit, this is where the tongue of the learned is expressed. You see, he said that he gave me the tongue of the pen of a ready ready writer. And my heart overflows with a goodly flame. Over the years, people have said to me, there he is, praying in tongues again. There he is, praying in tongues again. Speak in English, man. But why would I come into a tongue that the devil knows? If I stay in tongues, yeah, well, you've got to teach in English. Absolutely. And teach we do. But teaching is not for the want of many words. Sometimes it can just be very little so that you can take what God is saying, apply it, work it, and it becomes part of your life. But to pray much in tongues does something to an individual. Mm. Hallelujah. How many people pray in tongues in this room? Let me see your hands. How many people do not pray in tongues in this room? Don't be embarrassed. Just lift up your hands. Yes, I see you. Tonight's your night. The end of the service, we're going to pray for you. And we're going to get you speaking in tongues. I don't know if I believe in it. No. Don't be silly. (laughs) I think tongues are of the devil. Nope. I was in bars for many years of my life. And I never saw one person talk in tongues. (laughs) It's only silly Christians that believe that tongues are of the devil. People that have religious spirits. But I want you to declare tonight, I am free. I'm free. 
tell pastors everywhere, if anything that you can do is you get your people filled with the Spirit and you get them filled pronto. You get them baptized in the Holy Ghost and I'm telling you, you do not send them out there with a gun with no bullets. Amen. Stop this seeker sensitive thing and be sensitive seekers in the name of Jesus and go out there and lambast the world with the bazooka of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus and blow devils clean out of people's worlds in the name of Jesus. When you show up, everything begins to change. Can't you sense the anointing in this room? People walk into this room. I'm telling you, if you're carrying a demon, that demon isn't staying. The first thing that Jesus said in Mark 16 was what? Cast out devils. It's amazing. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to be in my best behavior. Hallelujah. <laughs> <sighs> Let's all pray in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. No, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Give the devil a breakdown. Come on, this is insight. Do you know that God has a plan for this church? Massive. You can sense it. It's all over it. I'm worshiping the Lord, and the Lord is saying to me, I brought this place to be a light set on a hill, not to be hidden. Hallelujah. Great opportunities have been afforded you. Come on now. Bretianke Sartuf. Veramashola Varamanaya. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. In the name of Jesus, tremendous utterance is a Khrafadanza la Paranufaneni. A Selbanasola Boramanaya. Isn't it powerful? Isn't it powerful? Isn't it powerful? I want you to set yourself to pray for one hour in tongues every day. Just start there. Before you ever get into English, get yourself into tongues. And then what you say in English will be much better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us go over, please, to 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Say, Pastor Paul, you're very bold in the spirit, yes. Because I don't believe we have days to mess around. You're very fortunate to have been called to a church like this. And I say that. Sometimes people think that they choose. You agreed. You agreed with the leading of the spirit to come to a place like this. You see, when you accept the will of God, your preference ceases to exist. God showed up in my life years and years ago and said, Paul, your preference is becoming an enemy to my plan and my purpose. I was the one who had to repent and say, Lord, it's not my will, but yours. Because each and every one of us have preferences. We have preferences on worship. We have preference in styles. We have preference in every area. And if it doesn't line up with our preference, then we simply want to shelf it, bend it. It's not for me. But the very thing could be for you is just not what you have decided is your preference. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's like what uh, Pastor Josh was saying tonight. He was saying, you know, about the offering. Those were great offering messages. Yes, Solid. Yes. I was thinking about a message that Karna myself heard there a couple of weeks ago and says that if you make the tithe the priority then God will always be priority in your life. Yeah. I'd never heard it put like that, quite like that before. And if you make tithing the priority in your home, then your children will always know that the priority is God. Yeah. Isn't that so simple? Yeah. So easy. Hallelujah. So look at this in 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. <laughs> I sense the spirit moving. <laughs> Woo. Uh, but the firm foundation, this is verse 19, amplified I'm reading from. But the firm foundation of laid by God stands, sure and unshaken, bearing this seal inscription. The Lord knows those who are His. 
And let everyone who names himself by the name of the Lord give up all iniquity and stand aloof from it. Wow. You see, in my life, what I'm looking for are absolutes. I'm not looking for the middle of the road. I'm not looking for the gray areas. I'm looking for the absolutes. I'm looking to lead my family into all truth. The Spirit does that. I'm not looking for ways just to get away with the way I want to live. I want to know by the Spirit, by the Word, the way to live. Amen? And that means at times dying to myself. Amen? I know that there's a lot that the devil does that makes us whatever, whatever, but we can't blame it all on the devil. There's a lot of flesh in Paul that I have to say, not today. It's very easy to say, not today, Satan, but I have to say sometimes, not today, Paul. Amen. Not my will, but his. And so in this verse, it says, because I'm looking at the day, I'm looking at us coming through. Just give me a few minutes and just really listen intently, because I believe this is the Lord. It says here, the Lord knows who are His. And let everyone who names himself by the name of the Lord give up all iniquity and stand aloof from it. I mean, that is an absolute. That's not me finding what I can get away with. I live in America. There's so many things that go on and so many things now in the Christian world are so acceptable. But yet in my house, I can't reconcile those things. Things that people do as believers, and they say, it's okay. I'm under grace. And I say, I'm under grace too, but I just can't in my heart and my conviction based on the Word of God do those things that you say are okay. And I go to the Lord, and I get a scripture like this, and He says, give up all iniquity and stand aloof from it. In other words, light cannot have fellowship with darkness. You see, what the enemy is looking for today is a dilution. He doesn't want the believer working as a concentrate. You see, tonight, this place is potent. Through that praise and worship, there's a potency. There's a concentrate. It's just not, you know, creating that concentrate now in worship, but it's what we are when we leave this room. Can we say when we leave this room that we are an absolute, that we are completely sold out, that we are completely given over to the Lord? Because what the enemy is looking for is for those that he can find room in. You see, what I've been declaring over these last months is I have pushed into the Lord and sought Him, gone a little quiet, haven't went to certain things, just been a little weird, but I've been pushing in to God, listening. Sometimes people don't understand these things, but when I don't know what to do naturally, I go to the one who knows every time what I should do. (laughs) How many people understand what I'm talking about tonight? I don't know what we would do if we didn't have Him. I don't know how we would be if we didn't have Him. Over these last few years, look at this. You made it. While other churches closed, you have flourished. Can you give the Lord praise and honor and glory? Come on, give Him praise and honor and glory. Why other things fell apart. Why other people had this and that and the other thing. Everybody was hit, but look at you. Even on a Sunday night on Father's Day, you choose to give a part of your Father's Day to come to church. That is a move. Stop looking for one and embrace this one. God placed you in a position. Amen? Why? Because there's purpose. I always say this. If you find your purpose, you will always find your position because purpose will automatically position you. Look at this, through these precious people, into these precious people, and now all of these precious people, representing the greater 
scope of the precious people that this ministry impacts on a weekly basis. One act of obedience leads to another act of obedience, leads to another act of obedience. It is amazing work of grace through the leading of the Spirit by the power of Almighty God. What you're sitting in tonight was not the dream of a man, but you're sitting in the vision of Almighty God. Amen. I'm telling you, if you ever ever believe to be in the will of God, you have to accept that your belief has brought you right into the midst of it. You see, sometimes we can't receive what's already here because we're so busy looking for it. There's not a person in this room who wants to make me weak, weep, that you could turn around and say, you know, I can't wait until we have great worship services. When we sense the Spirit moving and you stood in that presence of God tonight, you're not looking for a great worship service. You were part of a great worship service. Worship services, services only become greater the more that you yield in a greater way. <laughs> so what you're looking for is your responsibility of providing. Isn't it beautiful? So he said in this to me, because I asked him questions. I said, Lord, what's going on? We've just come through a tragic period of time when thousands of people died. I said, where was the church in the millions we should have been leading the fight? But we saw things in the church that we didn't like. But you see what happens, and what I believe happened, is that there was an extreme message that came in that watered and diluted the church. Because you can't go to the devil. You can't go to bed with the devil. And then get up in the morning and think that you can rebuke him. The front row saying amen. I'd like amen from the front to the back. You can't sleep around and think that it's okay. You can't go into the devil's camp and tango and have a, you know what, a hell risen time and Send like a tripper and then just think that you have the power of God over all the enemy. See, I'm asking the Lord for keys. I'm asking him for solutions. I'm asking him to help me. In October, he showed up in my life and he says, Paul, it's now time to disciple a move of God. Not just lead, disciple it. I knew I went to Pastor Karn and I said, this is going to make changes in our lives. And I said, I don't know what they're going to be, but I know that change is on the way. And I'd like to tell you that the last several months have been very comfortable. But the last several months have been so uncomfortable for me. But God has been moving. The power of has been increasing. You see, Jeremiah 17 says this, that if you put your trust in princes, you'll be cursed. See, man did not save you. Christ gave his life for you. Baranophanaya. He said, the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. Lift your hands with me all over this room. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for He has anointed me. Do not give up the bowl of porridge. Do not give up your birthright. Yield to the greater yes. 
But know this, that he that puts their trust in man shall be cursed. But he who puts their trust in the living God shall be blessed. God made you fearfully and wonderfully. He said to Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you and I brought you. And he said, do not look at their faces. He said, In other words, he says, I am the one who has started this. And I am the one who will maintain this. And I am the one who will finish this. And no matter what happens in the in-between, you and I are greater. I want you to shout it out. We are greater. You look around at this, ladies and gentlemen, because this is not the way this is going to stay. Where do you see this is gathering momentum? Any clown could see that this is gathering momentum. You can sense the elical sombangenesi, the elevation of the spirit. You can sense the preeminence of Almighty God. You can see that Christ has been placed at the very center of this work. And you cannot have a work denied when Jesus is being lifted up. He said, I will draw all men unto me. Where do you see this? This is just a trickle, but the dams are about to burst. I know it. I sense it. I feel it. And give the Lord praise and honor and glory. I sense it with Ambrosia Mina. Come on, give him praise. Give him honor. Magnify him. Stand to your feet, my brother. Stand to your feet, my sister. Quick, quick. Don't you think for one minute, says the Spirit of the Lord, that this was any way by accident and anything to do with you? For this fruit that is abounding, you will see because of your obedience and because of your part in it, that which has been laid up for you, you have no idea. There is more to receive than what you have ever believed. And what you thought was a negative at a time was a positive in me, says the Spirit of Grace. Know this. Rapas Stretch your hands towards them. Endembrikaya and palosofa. Fer panakaya. Vikanesia. Toms Calvinkan. Tabula. For a motopi me, hold my Bible for. I'm going to lay my hands on you. Just let me touch your spirit. <laughs> Days of great joy. No, 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 no. Greater. <laughs> Stand up again. Stand up again. Stand up again. Stand up again. Ow. 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 Pendeca palace. Panatel. Preacher Ponce. Feper Malcusi finger sal. Feper Lankiti fickel safaro. Per canaio. I feel a full of muke salma, a fair mark of nom, a fenicanagas or malondi. Come on, just receive of the spirit right now. A fenicanias, fair mosen, fair markinica de aristo, fair markini, arso, asanuca neve. Oh, 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 ah, I'm being a canese. Ah, panoe, a pene, oh, and salomokin, fairkin. Yep, yep, and a hot new canine. Ah, whoo, whoo, all mint kelken, falke makasel banaha. Come on, pray in the spirit a while. Come on, come on, everybody, pray in the spirit a while. Feniki kanaga sink a ban also. Ah, whoo, all me kane fenikanozano fenaya, fresh kanaya, fresh, fresh fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire. Hit them with fresh fire, Father. Fresh, 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 fresh. 
Make them, Father God, and Bonsalaya. Psalm 92, verse 10. Make them as strong as a charging bison. Make them as strong as a wild ox. In the name of Jesus, Semenakinea. O Zalamana Torskinea. Yes, Lord. And Bandrapa. Flamethrowers for your glory. Flamethrowers for your glory. Flame. And I heard this. You've been too tame recently, I hear the Spirit said. It's time to get a little wild again in the name of Jesus. It's time to get a little wild again in the Kifaniah, Hasso, Hasso, and Bando, and Tikalange, and Solo Kokanaya, and Trask. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> well, don't watch, don't watch, don't watch. Have your own party. Come on, it's Father's Day. Hallelujah. 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 What are you sitting there all there proper for? <laughs> sitting there proper. Well, I'm a proper pastor. What on earth is a proper pastor? You're a last days pastor. A last days pastor is going to have to be full of oil, full of joy, full of oil, full of joy, full of oil. Mandranga sambranga sa prapadaskanai. Feskovonge. Mangele pepalanzai. Vambrangadi pedikadam vadosun. Dambistikanaya. Mandorapaya. Mandombongadi pedikadabadanzai. Manjopadaya. Manjopalaina. Manjolapa prapadasolamaina. How many people speak in English in this room? It's amazing how you just, you do a lot of it. How many people speak in Afrikaans in this room? It's amazing you do a lot of it. Amazing. How many people can speak in tongues in this room? Yeah. Do you do a lot of it? Yeah. Now, if you spoke in tongues as much as you did in English, yeah. if you spoke in tongues as much as you did in Afrikaans, yeah. how many people know that, that things might be a little different in our lives? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't be nervous. I can see some of you are a little nervous. You're like, oh, my God. What's going on? No, don't be nervous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is far better than the, from the ambulance coming for you. This is far better than the men in white coats coming for you. This is far better than a night in the penitentiary. This is far better than a night in the slammer, in the jail. Come on, everybody. Some of you are looking like you've been sucking lemons half your life. In the name of Jesus, come on. You, you're wanting God to come and touch you. Amen. But have you touched him? Have you touched him? In the name of Jesus. The hottie dog's in tonight. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost hottie dog. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Well, let's go a little further. That got the first bunch. The next wave will get the next bunch. Hallelujah. Some of you are warming up. You're defrosting. Hallelujah. Mm. This is what the devil didn't want. He doesn't want a corporate anointing. He doesn't want power. He doesn't want believers getting a, bit, a little wild. You're going for your coffee, you know, and being all cute and, you know, trendy. You know, trying to reach everybody with your cuteness and your trendiness. You know, worshiping the Lord like Superman. You have to get to your place that you don't care how you worship. Amen. You just undone. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now look at this, please. And... Second Timothy 3. Lock the doors, please. Don't let anybody <laughs> out. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, 
I know it's been a while since I've been here. I know. But I love your pastors. I love their heart for the Lord. I love their heart for the things of the Spirit. They're revival people. And I'm telling you, we met in the Spirit, and we stay in the Spirit, and our friendship's in the Spirit. We enjoy ourselves naturally, but I'm telling you, it comes from the Spirit. And we love it. We love it. We have had some Holy Ghost times. And many of you weren't there when I was up there at that school, and he wheeled me about in a golden wheelbarrow. And some of you think he's very prim and proper, but I am telling you, you get him over in the Holy Ghost, the shoes come off, everything. I was going to say everything comes off. He, he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Come on, look at your neighbor and say, lighten up. In the name of Jesus, lighten up. When was the last time you had a good belly laugh? And then just a good old belly laugh. Doesn't always have to be in the Holy Ghost, just a good old belly laugh. Getting with somebody that you can really laugh with. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, oh, I don't know. I just don't know. I, oh, I don't know. Oh, shut up. Come on. Let's laugh. Let's laugh. Sitting there with a big old po head on. Oh, I don't know. Laugh. Mmm. Oh, they might think I'm a little weird. They already think you're weird. You come to Insight Church. They say, you're all weird up in there. You say, hey, you have no idea how weird we are. Don't try and, you know, defend it. Go with it. Tell them you've got to come and see how weird they are. Don't try and make it palatable. Just tell them, come. It's, it's worse than a circus. You want to see. Bring your phone. Film it. Put it on social media. It's free advertising. Don't try and tidy it up for the world. This wasn't raised for the world. It's raised for the church. That's what happened. We tried to gear the church for the world, and we lost the believers. They froze in the pew while we tried to reach the crackhead. And the crackhead's looking at us thinking, why would I ever want to be like you? But if we showed them that they could get high on the new wine of the Spirit, now you didn't hear what I said. I said, lock those doors. Don't let anybody up. Because we're going to get you rid of a spirit that you've been carrying too long, and we're going to get you the Holy Spirit. Because if you find this uncomfortable tonight, you have a wrong spirit. You have company of another kind. Because anyone that has the spirit of the Lord, you will feel yourself right at home, right now. That's the proof of you carrying the Holy Spirit. You are comfortable with what's going on right now. And if you're not, oh, oh. You got yourself company, <laughs> and you want to get rid of it right now. Moving right along. Pardon me? What'd you say? Did you remind me of the time? No. No. Isn't it wonderful to have Pastor Karen here? I hope you guys do as well as what I did, just saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, look at this. I'm trying to be sensible. That's wild. Don't you feel that? That was just wild. It's just wild. Imagine lighting a candle and sitting around it trying to get warm. I'm just going... 
just gonna sit at this little candle. Oh, it's freezing here in Durban. It's 24 degrees. So we'll light a candle and get ourselves warm. You're not gonna move yourself up to your candle and put your back end to it and go, isn't that lovely? <laughs> you want a fire that you can pull up to. Well, we don't need a little candle burning in the night on Florida Road. We need to incite something. Another play on the word, but use it. That's right. Come on. So 2 Timothy 3 said this, but understand this. Let's stop there. That's worth of underlining. But understand this. Uh, understand this. Um... um, um But understand this. Now, that's enough for us tonight. I'm just going to close my Bible and leave. <laughs> but understand this. I'm sorry if this is really boring, some of you. But <laughs> this is my level, and I receive it like this. So when I read the Bible and it says, understand this, and I, oh, I'm to understand this. <laughs> I'm not just to read it. I'm to understand it. I'm not trying to get through the Bible in 365 days. <laughs> that doesn't work with me. I, I'm too ADHD for that. <laughs> trying to go through 10 chapters a day is a nightmare for me. <laughs> uh, I would be getting into the third chapter and I would have a twitch. <laughs> How many people understand what I'm talking about? But some of you are so analytical. My 10 chapters, bless God. <laughs> I have them all laid out. I have my journal about my journal, and I have seven journals to journal off the one journal, and I am so good at it. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. He brings all things to my remembrance. Second Timothy, uh, Timothy. Uh, say, second Timothy three. First one. <laughs> Aren't you glad this is only one night? <laughs> we gotta lighten up. We gotta let people enjoy church. I mean, these are serious days. I'm about to help you understand it. <laughs> and these are serious days, but they're glorious for the church. Wow! out of you. Tell you down the street at the bar, they'll be here. Yeah! Coming out of here. They'll be like, my God. What's going on in that church? And they'll come to watch and bring their phones. This is what the young ones do. Everything's a phone. You can't do anything without the phone recording you. Are you filming me? I'm telling you, people tell me all the time, I'm on this, 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 this. I didn't even know I was on it. Because people's filming me. <laughs> oh, I know I... <laughs> <laughs> I've been feeling that for minutes. Barrosa. You're ready to run. You're ready to run. But run your race, and do not go into the lanes of others, because we have no time now for a marathon. 
this is a sprint. Stay in your lane and run. And do not be tempted to go left or right into that which belongs to another man. Receive your lane in the fullness of it, and you will not be disappointed with the reward of your labor. Lift your hands and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. So let's go over and understand something quickly. But understand this, that in the last days, how many people believe we're in the last days? Will come perilous times. This word perilous is disastrous. Perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an ordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. That's so strong right now. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals, and conduct uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. They will be treacherous betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit, and they will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. For although they hold a form of religion. Now, who are we talking to now? The church. And when we read this, we think, oh, no, this has nothing to do with us. But this is everything yeah, yeah. to do with us. And so you can see that the enemy masquerades as an angel of light. He is the master of error. But yet he weaves it like weeds in the midst of what seems to be right. But yet, it's amazing. It's amazing how he does it. But yet we are the children of light. We are not the children of the night. And the light shines on in the darkness. And John tells us it has never been overpowered by darkness. You thrived through COVID. You are not a survivor of COVID. You are the ones who thrived. And you have come out the other end. And now we must be prepared for what else is coming. Because if you think that was it, you have to think again. That's why you must never, ever think that we can return to normal. Thank God we've got rid of those masks. Thank God we've got rid of those vaccines. Thank God we've got rid of. That's not where we're supposed to work, looking back. We have to prepare, looking forward. And he said, understand this. Everything that I have listed is at work. You have to make sure it's not at work in you. Say, I receive this. So we have to take this, and we have to go through every single one of these. And we have to ensure that there is no room in us for this to work. How many people believe this is a great message for Father's Day evening? Welcome to my world. I am not a lover of myself. I am a lover of God. Amen. I am not self-centered. And anybody knows me, they will know that, that that is the farthest thing from me. I love people. And I'm telling you, I will give and do anything for people. So I can strike that one off the list. And then I can go on and on and on down this. But if there's anything that you find, anything that you find, you get it sorted 
You kill it, and you never allow it to live again within your life. Hallelujah. 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 For although, verse 5, they hold a form of piety or true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. I could bring in there Hosea 4, 6. That my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge or because they rejected it. I have a choice. You see, the worship is phenomenal. But you, when you leave this place, have to ensure that that spirit of worship is yours. And not Caleb's. Not the worship teams. It must be yours. You must be able to create that same environment on your own. And more than what you sense in this service. Because I do not show up to receive the presence of the Lord. I show up to bring and to exude the presence of the Lord. In other words, Paul tells us that I bring the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ that is afforded to me from the private to the public. But I need. I told people years ago, and I've never stopped. It's okay to borrow what is another's once in a while because we've all had a moment. We've all had a down moment. Do you mind, brother, if I borrow yours for a minute or two? Just let me just worship with you. The spirit of worship that's on Pastor Clint just lifts my hands and I, because I'm just not there right now myself. Doesn't mean to say I don't love him, but I'm just not there. I've been hit, I've been battered, I've been bruised, I've been down, I've been kicked, and maybe my personal has taken. Come on. Anybody ever been there? So what I can do is I can draw alongside pastors, friends, and I can say, just let me sit here. Just let me borrow yours for a moment. If we don't watch ourselves, church becomes that. That I come and I borrow pastor's anointing. You know, when Pastor Craig gets up there, can you sense that shift in the anointing? And man, but I don't feel that on my own, but when I sit under Pastor Craig's ministry, Man, I sense that all things are doable. All things are accomplishable. I can do all. It's just like the way he says it under that anointing. I can do anything. And then you go home to your world. And if you don't sense the same in the private, then you have to understand, even though you are a partaker by right, because this is your pastor. But this cannot sustain you. So you have to find who he is and work with him privately. And one day you will come to Pastor Craig. Hallelujah. Give me your hand. I'm a grateful man, Pastor. I sat for weeks and months. I'm telling you now, I go home. The same presence as the church is the same presence that's in my bedroom. The same presence that is the church is the same presence in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands all over this room.
see, I crave that. I can understand what David said. When life wasn't that great and he did a few things wrong, he says, create with me. I remember saying that one day as a believer and somebody came to me and said, you should never say that. You are a believer. I was so cut because they didn't understand the cry of my heart. The cry of my heart was not the acceptance of everything that Christ did for me. I have received all of that. But the cry of my heart is if there's anything in me, get it out of me. If there is anything that blocks anything, remove it. Arosa. Actually, I remember one of the times that I was here running. I know. To look at me now, you'd think that would never be possible. <laughs> I hung over a gate, weeping and wailing, and I said, Lord, think that's you're out of faith I wasn't out of faith I've met people that say they're in faith and they're as dead as Hector's goat <laughs> oh sorry Josh <laughs> he'll come and play Did you ever get with someone and you said to yourself, I want what they have? How ministers can you say that you sat under? They can teach you all they know. But when you leave, can you say, I can understand everything, but what I want, I want that. Yeah. How many people bear witness with that? Yeah. I want that. Verse 13, it says, but wicked men and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and leading astray others, and being deceived and led astray themselves. But as for you, as for you, continue and hold fast to these things that you have learned and of which you are convinced, knowing from whom you have learned them. You see, the fruit's there for you. I wish I could just sit with Pastor Craig. It's not fair. I wish I could just be around him. Let me tell you this. You do not know what you ask. I've had so many people over the years say, Pastor, can I come sit with you? Can I come pray with you? But it's no different, you see, than the disciples, the sons of thunder. Mom got involved. And can my son sit at one side and the other side? Can they sit with you? And Jesus says, you don't know what you ask. And even though it would be amazing to sit with Pastor Clint and Janine and Pastor Jerry and Michelle and Pastors Dave and Sandy and some other people, even though it would be wonderful to sit. It's 
not them that you need to sit with. withstand and done all to stand, stand. He's the one that leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He makes me sit down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And when I think I'm going a little crazy, he anoints my head with oil. He causes my cup to overflow. And he gave me his will. That whosoever believes in him should receive the Zoe life of God. Everlasting life. Came to a changing of the seasons and a changing of the guard in Joshua 1. It becomes so used to things in Moses' day and things under Moses. But then scripture tells us Moses, my son, is dead. But it's only been 30 days. Can we sit here and cry another while? I said, get up and move this people forward. And he told Joshua, there's only one way that you're going to do this, and it's to be strong and very courageous. And then he said, be strong and very courageous. And then the third time he said, be strong and very courageous. I want you to receive this. For this day that we're coming into, I speak a spirit of perseverance into your life. I speak a spirit of endurance, a spirit of tenacity. And I declare over you that you will succeed when others fail. That you will become so personally acquainted with the Almighty Himself by the Spirit of the Lord working in and through you and upon you, that the cravings of your heart will to be with him all the days of your life. That you will crave him more than you will crave any man or any woman. That you will crave him more than breath itself. That you will rise in the morning and you will go to bed in the evening and he will be the top priority in your heart and in your mind. Are there any believers in this room tonight? That you will look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Because scripture says, I looked to him and I was radiant in my face never blushed for shame. (sighs) If God ministered to you tonight, stand to your feet right now. All over this place. If God ministered to you, stand to your feet. (laughs) Harufi kabanza kimerskavai Three times the Lord told Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. You're a very blessed, fortunate people to be in a ministry as such as this. There's a caliber and a quality here that is rare. of which we are just thrilled to be part of. When you find the truth, buy it. 
and sell it not. That's what scripture says. Sell it not. This is not up for sale. This word courage is bravery. It's the ability to encounter danger and difficulties with firmness, without fear of depression of spirit, to have strength of mind, a determination, remaining steady and constant with a fixed purpose to be absolutely resolute. In other words, if anything's changing, it's not me. For I know in whom I believe, and I know he is well able. Take the, hand, take the hand of the person and lift it high right now. Lift the person's hand high above. Can we sing, draw me close to you? Do you remember it? Hold that person. Reach across the aisles. for each other. You are my desire. No one else will do. Come on, God did it in Moses. He did it in Joshua. Nothing else can take he did it in place. Esther. He did it in Shadrach. Meshach. He did it in Matthew. Help me find a way. He did it in Mark. Bring me he back did it in Luke. to you. He did it in John. He did it in Peter.
we're not looking for a move. He's here. Sing it again one more time, dear. Come on, listen to your voices tonight. Father, we pray for the person to the left and the right of us. Come on, exercise your faith right now. Pray for those people beside you. Pray that tonight is a marker in their lives. Pray that tonight is a night that things exponentially grow in your walk with the Lord. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take your seats ever so quickly. And I want you to close your eyes. We're nearly finished. But the Lord wants to do something. It's Sunday night. Every eye closed. If you're in this room. And you know. it's time to go further it's time to yield more and you know that tonight as much as everything else it was an invitation from the Father I want you to stand to your feet Amen in the presence of the Lord sweet as we take up the offering, I just had it in my heart for um, to share this, that dependency on the Lord is not weakness. Dependency on the Lord is not that you haven't made it to your own financial freedom. Dependency on Him never stops. And I'm gonna read you from Psalms chapter 78, and I'll read quickly, and it's talking about the people of Israel in the wilderness and it says, and they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the most high in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food that they craved. They spoke against God saying, can God spread a table in the wilderness? And he struck the rock so that the water gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of wrath. And a fire was kindled against Jacob and his anger rose against Israel because they did not believe in God and they did not trust in his saving power. Not because they craved, but because they did not believe in God 
nor trust in his saving power. Yet despite this, he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them gra the grain of heaven. Man ate the bread of angels and he sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and by the power, his power, he let out the south wind and he rained meat of the, on them like dust, winged birds like the sands of the sea. He let them fall in the midst of the camp all around of their dwellings and they ate and they were well fed for he gave them what they craved. The people of God have gone through difficult times and yet the Lord will never forsake his people. He is forever watching over his word to performance. Dependency upon him is not weakness. He's waiting for you to ask. He's waiting for us to be in a place of trusting Him. I've shared this story many times where a Christian businessman asked me, Joshua, are you building and you want financial success in business so that you don't have to depend on the Lord anymore? Is that why you're building a business? So that you have a high tower to sit in? while the people below. And it says this in Isaiah chapter 43, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men, and men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you up and I will say to the north, give up and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and I made. Did he not pay such a high price, but not to forsake you? These people walked through a sea and questioned whether God could feed them. You created as a new creature in Christ Jesus and you have the eternal living being dwelling on the inside of you. And yet we wonder where our food's gonna come from and how will we make ends meet and how will we pay the bills and how can He save us and what caused the anger? Not the craving. The anger of the Lord was there because His people refused to trust Him. They did not believe in His saving power. And the Father created us for dependency and intimacy with Him. It says again in Isaiah later on in that chapter, you forgot about sacrificing to me. That's what the Lord says. I don't require it, you forgot about it. I don't need it, you forgot about it. Imagine that the offerings that we bring to Him, you don't have cows and sheep, please don't bring them to the front. They don't fit in the offering basket. It doesn't work like that anymore. But it did back then. And it meant something to the Lord that you would take your prized, fattened calf. That's the best that you have to give of your herd. The best that you could cultivate as a farmer. It's the best. And you brought it to the Lord to be burnt. Not eaten, burnt. Not so we can shisinyaba outside, you know, shisinyama, everyone have some lamb on a spit, nice little bread roll, coffee. Not for that, it's burnt. It's for the Lord. What's that? It's a sacrifice to Him. And so you say, well, what's happening to my money when it goes there? Where does it go? It's a sacrifice to the Lord. It's burnt. What happens to burning things they make? Smoke. And the smoke, the aroma, goes up into the Father's nostrils. 
and it's a sweet smelling aroma. When what? When it comes from a cheerful giver. Amen. It moves the Father's heart because it says what? Even though this is my best and I can get a lot from the world with this, I'm gonna give it to you because I choose to place my dependency in your saving power because I choose to stay focused, centered. My increase comes from the Lord and from His hand. Amen. Thank you for watching. Join us again next week to stay in touch with all that God is doing at Inside Church. 